control of the heater cartridge on your 3D printer hotend is quite complex because if not managed correctly, it can cause issues with oozing, jams, under extrusion, poor layer adhesion, overheated prints, and more. So quite a few things. The amount of heating is controlled by turning the heater on and off when required using a software PID controller. On 3D printers running Marlin firmware, we use PID Autotune to calibrate the system, which ensures that the hot end will always be at the right temperature. The problem is, this Autotune can be run for differing numbers of cycles, which could potentially affect the results, and therefore the temperature of the hot end during printing. So today I'm going to be testing this so you can minimize your hot end temperature fluctuations and improve print quality. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. Right, so that we're all on the same page, I want to quickly run through what PID is in as few words as possible. So I've used Wikipedia to help me keep it succinct here. Put simply, it's a control loop mechanism, widely used in industrial control systems where continuous control is required. The basic way it works is by calculating an error value, which is the difference between the target value and the current value, and then applying a basic correction based on a proportional, integral, and derivative term, hence the name PID. PID Auto Tune then is a function baked into the Marlin firmware in order to determine those P, I, and D values required for your specific hardware in order to manage that control system efficiently. The test we're going to do today is fairly simple. I run the PID autotune command M303 for three to 20 cycles. Three is the minimum. So if you do try one or two, it just runs three cycles anyway, but never gives you a PID result. The firmware will not be updated at all during testing and no PID values will be applied. Each test will therefore start with the same PID values. So we get basically the same sort of starting point every single time. I'm going to be using 220 degrees Celsius as the reference temperature for all of the tests. I'll record the PID values from the Autotune result and record them in a table. Each test will start with the hot end at about 24 degrees Celsius, give or take maybe about one degree. To run this test today, I'm going to be using the E3D Hemira again with the 30 watt heater and 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The silicon stock is installed around the heat block, but no additional tape or clamps are applied to increase any pressure or contact or anything like that. There'll be no filament in the hot end when running the tests. I would have liked to include it, but given it's gonna ooze out at the higher temperatures anyway, and I can't really run constant flow for the whole test because it changes temperature, so no filament seemed really like the best solution. The part cooling fan will be disabled throughout testing, but the hot end fan will run normally turning on when the hot end reaches 50 degrees Celsius, running at full speed. Before we look at the results, I want to hear what you think will happen. Leave a comment down below how many cycles you think it will take, and while you're down there, hit subscribe so you don't miss future 3D printer and component testing that I do. My hypothesis is that at very low cycle numbers of maybe less than five, we'll see quite inaccurate values with lots of variation from one test to the next. Above eight cycles, I expect this will be a little bit more stable, a bit more, well, a bit less variation and a bit more accuracy. And then over 15 cycles, I think there'll be very little improvement from one cycle to the next. So we'll probably have sort of negligible impact by adding any more cycles on top. Eight cycles are typically recommended. They seem to be all over the place. So I expect somewhere around here will be the optimal that we're likely to find. Of course, there's only one way to find out what actually happens. First, let's look at the raw PID numbers. This is the exact data that I captured from the firmware. We can see with the D values that they are hovering around the same place, but don't seem to be getting closer to a specific value after more tuning cycles. The very same seems to be true with the I values. The P values though seem very accurate, but are much smaller. So maybe actually have similar percentage error. If we adjust all the data to be relative to the minimum in each set, we can compare each of the P, I, and D values to each other, as they'll all just be based on percentages. From this view of the data, again, we can't see any improvement with adding more tuning cycles, but it's much more noticeable how the P, I, and D values all seem to be in sync across the full range, with I values showing greatest variance, followed by P, 
and then D. There appears to be some ranges though where the PID values improve and then decline again. So the last perspective I want to look at is the magnitude of each value away from the average. Normalized, of course, to ensure that P, I, and D are all comparable in percentage terms. From this perspective on the data, we can see there are certain peaks of inaccuracy around 6 and 8, as well as 14 and 16. In contrast, there are also areas where the data seems to be significantly improved, with tests of 9 to 12 and 18 to 20 cycles staying very close to that mean value. The only problem is that as I didn't repeat the tests at each of the ranges, I can't be sure that these values are not just by chance. A slight oversight, really, in planning the test. Nevertheless, I think we still have some valuable data here that we can learn from. The I values, which are also the smallest by magnitude, demonstrated the largest overall percentage error of 5% from the mean, with peaks of inaccuracy at 6 and 16 cycles at 12 and 13% respectively. D values, the largest overall, had the smallest overall percentage error of 1% from the mean, with peaks of inaccuracy at 6, 8, 14 and 16 at 3, 3, 4 and 5% respectively. The P values sat somewhere in the middle with an average error of 3%, with peaks at 6, 16 and 18, with 8, 6 and 9% respectively. So let's answer the initial question. It doesn't seem to matter significantly in the range of 3 to 20 tuning cycles tested when working at 220 degrees Celsius how many of those cycles you actually make in your tune. They are all largely similar in accuracy. While some of the data suggests improvements in certain ranges, this would need to be validated with further repetition to ensure that this is actually repeatable. If I were to do testing like this again, I would change a couple of things though. Firstly, iterative PID tuning by updating the PID data on the firmware after each test would be an interesting alternative to the current method that seems to be used fairly universally. This seems to be part of what the auto-tune function is actually doing, but the success doesn't seem to be all that impressive with no significant improvement up to 20 cycles. So perhaps by implementing the results after maybe 10 cycles, we can put them back in and then improve the results after that. In that same vein, testing a greater range of cycles, maybe up to 40 or 50, with some repetition at each stage, would be interesting to find out how repeatable these results are. And that would definitely then tell us if certain ranges do provide better results than others. At this point, my recommendation for doing PID tuning would be to do it more than once and take an average and using somewhere between 9 and 12 cycles for each run, being sure to let the hot end cool back to 25 Celsius between tests. So that's it from me today. Hopefully you found that interesting and it can help you in making steps towards improving your print quality over time. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.